In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up a new WordPress website without having to pay for hosting. Um, this is not a free hosting tutorial as much as it is uh, a useful way of building a new website, but not making it available on the internet yet. So for example, you might think of this as a development website, somewhere where you can build all of your content and get it working the way you want before you then pay for hosting online. We'll be using a tool called MAMP to make this work, and I'll be working on my Mac. Uh, however, the process is pretty similar if you're on Windows. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install a piece of software called MAMP, M-A-M-P. So you can navigate to MAMP.info in a browser. Now, MAMP comes in two different editions. There's plain old MAMP, which is free, and then there's MAMP Pro, which is a paid for version. I'm gonna go through and download MAMP Pro, and then I'll tell you about the uh, the different editions. So we'll get that download started, and there we go. So firstly, MAMP is a piece of software that uh, actually combines four different pieces of software together. Um, well, actually, technically three pieces of software. So the M in MAMP at the beginning uh, stands for Mac, uh, A is for Apache, M is for MySQL, and P is for PHP. And those are the sort of three key things that are required to make a website like WordPress operate uh, or to be able to host it. Generally, when you pay for WordPress hosting, you're getting all of those pieces of software as well. What MAMP allows you to do is to have all of those pieces of software running locally on your own computer so you can work in kind of a, a local mode or development mode and then you can take that website that you've built locally and upload it to an environment where it's available for everyone to see on the internet. You can do lots of different things with this MAMP software. Uh, I've had a MAMP Pro um, it license for a number of years. Um, it's not overly expensive uh, and it's very easy to use. And if you're thinking of going through the process of building a new website, then it makes sense to use this as a starting point um, because it gives you the, the flexibility, I guess, to build your website locally and then you know, worry about hosting it when you're happy that it's ready to be hosted. Um, so the download is almost finished here. The main difference between MAMP and MAMP Pro is that MAMP Pro gives you the ability to, if you like, host a number of websites locally on your own computer. There are a range of other things that it will do, but that's the primary difference. Um, so you may be able to get through just by using MAMP. MAMP Pro comes with a 14 day trial though, so you can try this, see if it's gonna do the job. Um, if you want to then pay for um, you know, the full license, you can do that. So our download is finished. I'm just gonna run through the installation process here. There's nothing too special or interesting about the process. And at the end of this, what you'll have is effectively uh, the ability to host your own website on your own computer, which in and of itself is not amazingly useful for anyone but you because the rest of the internet can't see it. Great, installation has been successful. Uh, we'll move the download into the trash. We're all set to go. So I'm going to go into my applications folder. We'll sort this by date added. And at the top of the list, we have MAMP and MAMP Pro. So MAMP Pro is what we're interested in. So I'm just going to double click on that to run it. The first time you run it, it'll ask you for your credentials to install a helper tool. Primarily what that helper tool is giving you the ability to do is, um, is to manage uh, URLs that you enter in um, as hosts, which I'll talk about in a little bit later. So this is a demo version. It's going to work until the 22nd of January, 2017. Um, although I own a license, a license, I'm not going to enter that right now. Uh, I'm just going to choose OK, and we'll work with it in this trial mode. So we get a what new page. I'm not too concerned about that. We'll get rid of that. And this is the main MAMP interface. I'm just going to change this window size a little bit to try and get it to fit in here. There we go that will do. Okay, so a couple of things that you need to know about the software. Firstly, over on the left hand side, a couple of different server options. The ones that you'll primarily need to be able to run a WordPress website are Apache and MySQL. 
The ticks that you've got here basically mean that when you click this servers button, it's going to start up all of the different services that have ticks on them. When they're started up, these icons here will change to say that they're on, and that means that they're running. And also, when they start up, this servers icon will also change as well. So I'm going to click on that server button. Um, it says it's about to start up MySQL. That's fine. We'll say continue. You can see we get some progress indicators here. Great. So we've got a green light here. That means that these servers are now running. And we've got a tick and an on switch here for Apache and the same for MySQL. So all of that put together basically means that if I open up a web browser and go to a website called localhost, what that's going to do is it's going to give me um, a stock standard website. Now, it's not a WordPress website yet, but it is a website. So the first thing you'll notice here is that it's uh, in the browser, it's listed as localhost, which is just another name for my computer. And it's got this colon 8888 here. So what that's just telling me is that it's not running on the standard ports that a typical website would run on. Without going into a lot of detail, typically websites will run on port 80 or port 443. Think of those as like frequencies on a radio. Um, they just allow um, a number of uh, radio stations to use the same airwaves and every one of them uses a different frequency. So what this is basically saying is it's using the frequency 8888 or port 8888. So the first thing we can do though is we can actually change this so that we're using the standard ports that a general website would normally use. So if I go back into MAMP, over on the left hand side here we've got a ports option. And this is actually telling me all the different ports that are going to be used. And you can see I've got a button here that allows me to set my ports to port 80 and 443 and all of the other standard ports. So if I click on that and then click on save, you notice over here that the um, little progress indicator started to spin. Basically it's saying that to make this effect or to affect this change, we need to restart the, uh, the MAMP server. So we'll just say yes. And you'll find in a lot of situations that that'll happen. You'll have made a change, saved something in MAMP, and then it'll prompt you and say, hey, you need to restart the server to, uh, to make that effect or to affect that change. And generally just choose yes. It's taking a second for these to restart. And I can see here by the progress indicator that I'm still waiting. Still waiting. I do find sometimes it'll kind of get stuck in this restart loop. There we go, we're all set to go. So if I go back to hosts, local host, and I click on the little button here to jump to a browser, you can see now that we get to the same website we were on before, but you notice that we're just using local host as the name. Um, so what this is actually telling us is that our host has been successfully set up. Now, not that we can actually do much with this website. Um, this is all this website does. It's not WordPress, but it is a website. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through and now set up um, a version of WordPress in this website as well, or actually in a new website. So the great thing about MAMP Pro is that you have the ability to set up a number of individual websites or what are called hosts. And each of these hosts can have its own URL. And you can also specify things like uh, what version of PHP you want to use or whether you want to use um, Apache as a server or whether you want to use Postfix for um, different services. So, you know, generally we're only talking about WordPress in this tutorial. And so we're going to keep it simple and we're going to deal with Apache and MySQL. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new website here and we're going to install WordPress so you can see the whole process from scratch. So I'm going to click on the plus sign at the bottom of the uh, the new hosts box. And the host name that we enter in here will actually be the URL for the website that gets created. So I'm going to create a website called uh, myfirstwebsite.com. The only other thing that we have to specify is what's called the document root. This is basically where in your file system on your computer, you want all of the files for the website to live. So if you click the folders over here, um, you can go through and then pretty much store this wherever you like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Applications. I'm going to go down to the MAMP folder. And there's a htdocs folder here. I'm going to open that up. And in here, I'm going to create a new folder. It doesn't really matter what I call it, but I may as well keep it similar to um, the URL that I've created. So I'm going to call it my firstwebsite.com and create that. 
choose that. Now you do get other options here to create a database and copy the contents of a template. Don't tick either of these to get things started. That's all you need to do. Enter in a URL and give it a, a folder name on your own file system where you want the files to live. Choose create. So it's now created this new website. If I save that, it's going to prompt me to restart the servers. I'll say, yep. You'll notice here that we've got localhost, which is the website that MAMP created when it was installed. And now we've got myfirstwebsite.com also. Now, even though this looks like a website that you would find on the internet, technically it's not on the internet. It's just on your own computer. So if you went to a friend and said, hey, my new website's live. It's at myfirstwebsite.com. They wouldn't be able to see it because you're the only one that can see it on your own computer. So you can see though that if I go to a browser and put in myfirstwebsite.com, I still get that MAMP Pro website that we saw a few minutes ago. Okay, that's all good. Now the WordPress part. In MAMP version four, they introduced this extras concept. And what this enables you to do is to install common pieces of software. So if you hit the plus sign at the bottom here, you can see we've got a whole range of different pieces of software. And the one that we're interested in is WordPress 4.7. So you just click on that and choose install, and it's going to prompt you for a couple of pieces of information. Firstly, you'll need to put in an email address. The directory where it will be installed will by default be that folder that you created when you created the website. So I can just leave that as it is. The table prefix, that's fine. The database name. So because we're using MySQL as our database, it generally would make sense to change the database name to match the website that you're actually building. So you might want to change this to something like WP underscore my first website, as an example. It's going to set up a username of admin and the password of admin, which we can change later. And there's an install button that's just off the screen here that you would click. At this point, what it's doing is it's actually downloading WordPress from the wordpress.org website. And then it's going to install it in the file system and it's going to create the database and do some basic configuration inside WordPress to get the website up and running. Great, that's all done. So if I now go back to the general tab and click on the button here, you can see that I've now got a real website. That is, this is a stock standard WordPress installation using the 2017 theme, and it looks, acts, and works like a proper WordPress website. If I go down and choose login, use admin and admin and login, I'm now logged into the WordPress uh, admin interface. Um, let's make a quick change. I'm going to go through and change my title here from my great blog to my first whoop, website. And we'll save that. And you can see that we've now got my first website listed here as well. So now that you've got your WordPress website up and running, you can now go through and build new content, add new posts, choose the different themes, install all the different plugins you might need to get your website perfect before you then think about hosting it on the internet for the world to see.